Howdy guys, got to go to the gun show this weekend and pick up one new gun. Thought I'd use it as an introduction or a way to show off some of the other guns I'm dealing with. Particularly, actually, we're going to look at single shot um, guns. One I can shoot very accurately, one I can't. As you can see, these are not tattoos. These are uh, stamps to get into and out of the gun shows. Kind of strange that one of them happens to be a, a star that's smiling and trying to give you a hug. That's, it doesn't seem very gun related. <laughs> um... I don't like mixing alcohol and uh, and guns, but I thought I'd show off this new beer glass I got, made by friend and friends. Kudos if you've ever had uh, Tusker, Tusker Yakubwa Bada Yakazi, for all those who've ever visited East Africa. It's neat, it's got an inside mold to it, and if you look at this, uh, this, this beer um, glass, the inside mold is actually the neck of a beer bottle, so <laughs> it's kind of artsy, kind of fun. Doesn't add anything to the taste of the beer. And, uh, oh well. Alright, let's look at the first gun. This is it, believe it or not. Kind of reminds me of like uh, the old KGB uh, or James Bond kind of thing. It's a, it's a pen gun, kind of. It's not in any other weapon, an AOW, you know, um, NFA uh, ruled pen gun. And that's because it actually transformed. So let's take a look at this thing. Let's make sure it's not loaded. You do that by unscrewing the end here. Alright, that is the barrel, believe it or not. Look at that tiny thing. That's what, like an inch and a half or something like that? So there's no sights, really short barrel. Can't be that accurate, and it isn't. I mean, compared to, to something like this, this is a new birdie bunt line. This has got an 18, uh, I think 18 and a half inch barrel. This barrel is longer than some of my rifle's barrels. So, uh... <laughs> Shoot him this revolver at the range, you know, he can do a pretty good job. This, well, I've shot this at five feet and it still managed to miss the target. So, either needs more practice or, or I don't know what. But, uh, it takes way too long, rifle. I'll show you how to load it, but I'm not going to actually have it loaded. And just slip it in there, and that's it. It's a single shot. Now, if you ever get one of these things, make sure when you go to the range, you bring something to push that casing or that bullet out of there. Because otherwise, you'll be picking at that like crazy and won't won't do nothing. Uh, once again, this is a Stinger. Um, I believe that aside from 22 Long Rifle, they've also made these in uh, 17 HMR, uh, 22 uh, WMR Winchester Magnum Rimfire, uh, 25 ACP, and I think I've heard that they made them in 380 ACP. The 380 might kind of be useful. I mean, 22 Long Rifle. Um, my gun dealer called this a bad breath gun. If you're going to use this, you got to be able to smell the person's breath in order to, fi to fire it on them, you know. Kind of, since it's single shot, maybe it reminds you of like a Liberator or something, you know, during World War II. The idea wasn't that you, you know, you break out of the Nazi prison camp with it. It's you use it to, to shoot the guard and take his gun or something. But in reality, this is just a novelty. So, you load it by dropping the bolt down that barrel and you screw it firmly in place. See, it looks just like a, a really nice ballpoint pen, but here's the neat part. You pull and stretch and bend. Look at that. And now, this is why it's not a uh, NFA ruled weapon, because it actually has a, the shape of a pistol, has an exposed trigger. And then you actually have a safety here. you got to turn that in order to free up the firing pin so it can strike the rim of your, uh, your rim fire ammo. And actually, I think we might be able to see that in here. Let's see, you can kind of see that, that block in there, that big rectangle that has a hole? When you move the safety down, that hole now lines up with the firing pin so it can pass through it and crimp your uh, rim fire. It's kind of weird, and I guess we'll, we'll fire this from fire. I normally don't like doing that, but it's kind of weird that the way to fire this, this trigger, you push up on it. So in our words, you're aiming at somebody, and then you have to kind of move your index finger up. And uh, it's not the most natural of, uh, of motions. I mean, normally with guns, we're used to pulling in our index finger. Once again, I'm left-handed, so get used to that. <laughs> and so you push up, and there it goes. And you can't see the flinch in the gun and all that when that happens. So it's a novelty. It's fun. You, I tried out the range, and I was having a hoot with my friends. You know, we're, we're trying to shoot a target at, you know, five feet, literally five feet. Uh, we started 15, nothing. Brought it back to 10, nothing. Brought it back to 5. You know, we're kind of looking at the range master like, how's he gonna, <laughs> how's he gonna deal with this? Anyway, once again, so uncock it that way, turn off the safety, 
and then you'd have to go through that whole process of trying to, to push out the bullet. Uh, we ended up like ripping up some of our uh, ammo cases and using the, the cardboard to jam it down there if we could. I, the idea I thought was maybe you could use the, uh, the pen clip to try to ram it down there, but that only works if the bullet's not fired. Alright, let's put this thing away. Uh, let's bring back that Uberti. That's kind of an interesting gun. Just because if you get a chance, you know, um, I picked this up on a whim. It's, it's a fun gun to shoot, you know. I brought it out to the range. The range master saw me pull that thing out and says, what the hell are you thinking, you know. It's, well, it's, it's the gun that the Joker had when he shot down the Batwing in the first um, Batman movie. But it is a fun gun. Um, not as heavy as you'd think. Um, it's either that or else the, there's something about the grips that are just really comfortable. I mean, you can be pretty steady with this thing. Uh, it's six shot, 357 Magnum. They're actually not that expensive. Um, and uh, what what kind of really sold me on it is uh, Uberti has posted on YouTube their firearm uh, manufacturing uh, process, and it's really impressive. So, kudos to them. It's a great gun. It's fun. Um, and uh, double action only, you know. And look, it actually has a exposed pin. Cool. Anyway, back to single shots uh, guns. This one not very uh, accurate. This is what I just picked up at the gun show. I'm pretty stoked about this. Um, I went to a countryside gun show. I was looking around, didn't see anything. I made about three to four passes of the uh, of the uh, the, the different uh, tables, and then this one just caught my eye. As I, as you know, I'm left-handed, so anything left-handed kind of like just sparks my curiosity. Pardon me a second while I wet the whistle. What is this thing? Well, um, you know, this was the this if this is the James by James Bond spy thing, this is the KGB right here. In fact. What it is, it's a uh, it's a Soviet, I'm not going to say Russian, it's a Soviet target pistol. And if you look at the instructions, uh, I guess when they, these things came out, it actually says USSR on them. That's <laughs> Wow, what a throwback. Neat. Alright, so this is a Taz Olympic um, target pistol. Look at this thing. First of all, I mean, just look how beautiful the presentation is here. Now this is, it, people have called this, you know, the uh, the Carmen Ghia of target pistols. You know, a lot of people go after the Hammerleys and things like that. But these are getting more and more rare. They were originally, uh, they started manufacturing them, I think, in like the 1950s, I think 1959. And from what I understand, I don't think you can find these anymore. So maybe like three or four years ago, these are only a couple hundred dollars. Now I'm seeing them posted for over a thousand, if you can find them. And the idea is that they might not be the most beautiful thing in the world, but uh, where it counts, you know, the trigger, the barrel, the action, you know, they're pretty accurate. These were Olympic um, competition pistols. So let's take a look at this thing. As uh, as you saw earlier, I do have the instructions. And what's kind of neat, look at this, uh, you know, the, uh, the address at the back, it's in Cyrillic, you know. I don't know if you can see that. Um, yeah, for the life of me, I wouldn't be able to read that. And... Um, it's old, it's taken care of, and <laughs> they have the proofing here. Uh, I guess instead of a signature, they have these uh, these proofing marks, and uh, they indicate here that at 50, uh, yar uh, 50 yards or 50 meters, uh, a 10-shot group had a dispersion diameter, they're calling it, of 24 millimeters. So at uh, about 150 feet, uh, the, the distance between the, the two furthest shots uh, was 2.4 centimeters, less than an inch. That's not too bad for a for a pistol with no magnification sights or anything on it. All right, one of the odd things on it: um, windage, elevation, not in English. <laughs> I took this to the range without the instructions, and um, for the life of me, I couldn't figure out uh, how to how to dial in my sights. But let's take a look at this thing. I mean, first of all, beautiful case. There's even um, a cleaning rod stored at the top of the case. Um, as you know, I like uh, boar snakes, but having a complete setup like that, kind of neat. Um, I guess there's an oiler or a, a grease pan or whatever. You've got different wrenches. we got uh, different types of brushes here. This is kind of weird. 
they have extra parts in here. You springs, uh, actions, uh, your blade sights. And it's in this weird, like, wooden yo-yo. I don't... <laughs> you know, uh, it kind of reminds me, I guess, you know, how, like, Russian nesting dolls were mass-produced. I, I, I wonder if these kind of containers are mass-produced. You know, let's throw that back in the wax sheet. Well, let's look at the gun itself. Now, from what I understand, uh, a lot of these uh, were sold with aftermarket grips, and this is what drew me to it, is these aftermarket grips happen to be left-handed. So, let's drop the suitcase on the ground for a second, so we can look at this thing. There she is. What a beauty, huh? Or, uh, I don't know, what a beast. It's 22 long rifle, but it's kind of neat because, uh, once again, we're going uh, contrary to, you know, U.S. calibers. So they call it a 5.6 millimeter, you know. If you think about it, 223 Remington being very similar to 5.56 NATO, well, that's what's happening right here. 223 and a 22 long rifle, very similar. Uh, so 5.6. Uh, they might be, I don't know if they're calling it NATO or what. There's a, looks like another Cyrillic letter after it. I don't know if you can see all this. There's all this little marking going on here. What kind of drew me to it, first of all, I mean, the grips, aftermarket grips, left-handed, look how, how weird these are, you know, they've got three points of articulation on the base of your palm, uh, you got different uh, articulation here out, uh, at the bottom of your, uh, your pinky or your grips, um, the whole side just slide around so that essentially, this now becomes like a glove, you slip your hand into it, look at that. And I, I guess the idea is, you know, a single shot with the pistol. Because if you try practicing like this, your um, your wrist is going to smack against this plate. And actually, I tried shooting at first when I was uh, when I was zeroing, thing, trying to zero this in like that. And then when I went to go shoot my uh, my carry, let's see, I'm still carrying it actually, my 1911. I guess all the pressure over here was causing my hand to like flinch to the right. So everything I was shooting was way off target, and usually that doesn't happen with a nice Kimber 1911. One second, one more time uh, with the, uh, the Tusker. Alright, so how does this thing work, you know? Um, when they are selling points, uh, I was actually looking at Martini Henry style uh, actions for rifles. I like that idea, I like the, uh, the look of that. It's kind of like uh, the, the kind of breach that it is. And this has that, and this is the uh, the gate, this is what moves the gate open and close. If you look at the top, you'll see that. You can actually lock it in place, and there you go. And then when you snap it open, um, you'll see that the little board pops, will pop out the bullet. We can actually do that. Let's, um, I gotta keep my finger off, off of this, uh, this, uh, this trigger because this is a hair light trigger all right where did we put I think the bolt might still be in this thing did I do that yeah oops my bad all right one of the ideas I was playing around with uh with this gun you know since there, there are no sights they, the instructions are like sight down the barrel you know what if you took your other pen you know a laser pointer <laughs> and like rubber banded that <laughs> to the thing um, nah, bad idea. All right, I forget I even said that. All right, so let's like look at this action. It's just kind of neat how you know old world this is, or how the different silos. You, you drop in your bullet. Whoops. You know, the one time you're gonna show it on TV, I mean on on YouTube, things aren't cooperating, eh? Oh, that's right. For some reason. It won't take hollow points, or at least it won't take these CCI hollow points. So give me a second. I'm going to grab some 22 long rifles out of the range bag. I'll tell you what, I love these massive boxes of federal uh, <laughs> federal ammo. Yeah, this is like I don't know, like the fourth time to the range I've been using this thing, and look. It's still mostly full, especially if you're going to use a single shot gun, huh? So you drop the gate, you slip in your bullet. Let's see, I don't know if you can see the angle. All right, see how that's in there? And the breech goes over that. Now, the actually the um, the uh, 
the firing pin is not cocked. This is the cocker here. We'll go over that later, but when you release this thing, you'll see little arms pop this thing out. I don't know if that, that might have been too fast. See that? It's just really smart action that they had back in the day, you know. Alright, now why am I not playing around with the trigger? You know, I actually have the finger like sticking out away from the gun. Well, as I said, this is how you charge it. Alright, so now this is actually charged. I don't have the breech closed, no ammo in there, so we were actually able to shoot this thing. And just, I'm going to use this finger so you can see. About the touch. Alright, here we go. Listen for the other, the snap. Do you hear that? I, I just barely even touched that. One more time. The <laughs> this is one of the only guns where I've accidentally done a couple misfires of the range. I'll be honest. Thank God it's a 22 long rifle, but I, I'm just picking it up. I'm trying to put, rest my finger on there like you know you would with your defensive handgun. You're getting ready to shoot, and it goes off without you even realizing. This, uh, the trigger is measured in, uh, in grams, and we're talking like double digit grams. It goes from 10 to 100 uh, gr grams, is what they're saying. And if you think about it, 10 grams is about a third of an ounce, if I remember correctly. So, <laughs> this thing is so light. Um, as I said, the, the instructions indicate that you should be able to shoot this thing fairly accurately at 50, uh, 50 yards, 150 feet. I mean, once again, these are like iron sights, but uh, this is elevation, and it doesn't say like up or down. We have arrows pointing to like, I don't know, I don't know what letters those are. <laughs> those are not English letters. And we have um, windage here to be dialed in. And one of the things I was reading about these things online was that uh, the company Tula Arms that was making these things, uh, which is apparently a Russian gun company dating back to the 1700s, you know, created at the, uh, inst at the behest of some czars or something like that. They didn't care about quality that much, so the idea was that, you know, you got kind of not so pretty wood, not so, uh, finished off parts. And that was definitely noticeable on the sights. I bought this unfired, and the sights were crooked. Well, that's okay, because you can, uh, you can loosen a screw here to pop out the front sight, and there's a screw underneath, so you can actually twist this sight around. But uh, this thing was definitely canted over to the left. So uh, you fiddle with that at the range, fiddle with all of the different things. Ideally, uh, you're eventually going to be able to shoot at 150 feet and, uh, and get good target shots. Um, I don't think I can even see it at 150 feet. Anyway, that's, um, this is a Taz uh, Model 35M. I don't think they're in production anymore. It's hard to, to find all the parts to it. But uh, I'm really stoked about this purchase. I mean, now, if, if you're really looking into doing some long-distance shooting... Let me put down the toss for a second. There's another option. Of course, it's in a higher caliber. But I've been playing around with this puppy here. Uh, <laughs> now, that's the difference, huh? This is an AICS left-handed action with a Remington LTR... Chambered in 308 LTR. Uh, this is the uh, the heavy barrel. Uh, it's the short heavy barrel. It's fluted. Uh, it's got the Atlas uh, bipod on here. Ah, let's crack open the uh, the whole stock. I mean, what a beauty! And I got this Night Force uh, scope on this thing. Um, I'll be honest. I, I totally mall ninja did it. I I'd never tried a Night Force out. Uh, it was available. I know it's hard to find some glass. I was looking at something cheaper, and um, I saw one of these for sale, and uh, <laughs> I treated myself, and I'm glad I did. It's a great scope. I uh, took this out, out with some friends, and uh, I mean, 308's got a bunch of punch, but we were enjoying it so much, we were shooting all day. But what a great looking gun. The AICS uh, stock, I really like it. Um, I never even fired the LTR in its original stock, because um, this has been uh, floating around in my mind for a while. One of the advantages, obviously, is you actually do have a removable magazine now. Uh, as opposed to an internal um, magazine. Uh, heavier stock, I mean, the whole thing altogether, I'm sure, weighs probably like 10 to 15 pounds. Um, but obviously, this is not something you're going to be holding and shooting. You're going to plant it down, and uh, to that end, we actually have these this Atlas bipod on here. Really nice bipod with uh, extendable feet, I think. There we go. And 
And, uh, I mean, taking this to a local indoor range is just kind of defeating the purpose. So uh, indoor ranges go to 150 uh, feet, really good for that taws. But this, uh, this was something that you need to go outside for, you know, and, uh, and get some of those long shots in. Anyway, I'm sure everybody's seen what a Remington 700 looks like. I just really like this thing. Once again, the barrel of this is almost the same length as the barrel of that. However, this is not nearly as accurate as this. And uh, this is kind of neat, but uh, <laughs> that can't be discounted. Anyway, cheers, guys. Hope you enjoyed.